Okay, uh, welcome back. So this is the, the last of our tutorials in this series. I'll, I'll probably do a whole bunch of shorts uh, later on to cover off individual skills. So, so if you have something that you want to see, uh, make a comment uh, down below and uh, we'll see if I can't get to it and make it a little short. I'm going to try to keep those at, you know, sort of in the three to five minute range uh, just to cover a particular skill or capability within the software program. Uh, but in the meantime, what we need to do is we need to consider crashing our project. Uh, and so what crashing is, of course, is we're, we're going to have to buy time. We're going to spend money uh, or potentially spend money in order to shorten uh, our project. Now, if, if we're not spending money to buy the time, then you got to wonder why we weren't doing it faster and more efficiently in the first place. It's possible that we have inefficiencies in our project and we're looking for those inefficiencies to bring them forward at really no cost to the project. Uh, but let's assume uh, for the sake of this uh, exercise that we're, we're working at maximum efficiency and we can't achieve a shorter project uh, without spending money to do it. And so what I want to do today is to cover over not the fundamentals of crashing projects because, you know, that's a bigger topic and, uh, you know, I'm assuming you coming to this with some familiarity, but really how Microsoft Project is going to help, uh, help us manage those, uh, changes that we need to do and to incorporate them into our plan. So uh, first thing I've done is, I, I, again, I've gone back and I've opened up a, an older version of our project going along. So this is, again, after our uh, first status update at the, in the Wednesday, after the Wednesday of the first full week. Uh, so like I did in the last one, I'm going to very quickly reset my today's date so that it doesn't confuse people. So I'm going to go to project information, set current date, and we're going to choose... Uh, where are we all? We're in June. We should be in May and uh, 16th. So I think that would be there. And so now we, we have the current date, uh, the green line coinciding with our status update. So there's a number of ways that you can spend money in order to buy time to shorten your project. And there's a number of reasons why you might do it. So first off, in sort of the microscopic perspective in and around the individual tasks, it could be that we have uh, to shorten an individual task so that the resources are going to be available for other tasks that are conflicting with it. That would be one thing. In other cases, uh, we're just trying to shorten the overall project because, you know, primarily working on the critical path in order to bring forward that date to meet whether it's legal obligations, contractual obligations or, or something. Um, so I'm going to go through a few of the more common things that you might do. So the first thing that we got to, you know, we'd like to consider is this has been fully resource uh, leveled. And in order to resource level it, we had to incur delays along the path. So it's quite possible that we could achieve some savings if we could reduce those, those leveling delays that we introduced. And just as a reminder, if I go back to my leveling Gantt, uh, set it up so we see the whole project. you can see some of those leveling delays that have been put in there in order to accomplish what, what we were trying to achieve. So if I were to look at this and I says, okay, you know, what are ways that we can remove our leveling delay? Well, obviously if we can acquire additional resources, then we, these leveling delays might not have been needed. An alternative would be to change the manner in which we're implementing a particular task. And so, uh, you know, we, we've got the laborers working away on the radiant floor. It, it's entirely possible that we could choose to do that by contract. So if I wanted to reach out and uh, get a contractor uh, to do that project or that task, then the leveling delay would not have been necessary uh, in that instance. And so what I'm going to do is first off, in order, if I want to do it by contract, I'm going to have to go to my resource sheet because I don't have a, a contract set up for that. So if I go to my resource sheet down here, we can go to Joe's contracting. I've worked with them before. They do a good job. It's a cost and 
it's going to come at the end. And so now if I go back to my Gantt chart, uh, let's go, go to the leveling Gantt so we can see it. You know, I'm going to look at the radiant floor. Uh, I currently have the laborer, obviously the panels, uh, as resources on it. We're going to replace that with a contract, uh, just so I know what I'm doing. If I, I put in the, the cost column here, so we know that that's costing us $690 primarily for the laborer and the cost of the radiant panels themselves. So I'm just going to go to resources, assign resources. Uh, here I want to add Joe's contracting. So you can see the costs here. So Joe's contracting. It's going to cost us a thousand dollars for him to do the install. Now we're going to be providing our own labor, uh, which is fine. And then we need to reduce this down to zero. Actually, I'll just remove that. We say close. And so now we've swapped it out. So we have the cost of the contract plus the cost of the panel. So we're more expensive. We're still taking the one day to do it. Uh, but now we shouldn't need this uh, leveling delay. So I can bring that down to zero. Uh, now it's quite possible. I, maybe I should have left it at one or two because maybe we can't reschedule it uh, to its maximum efficiency. But let's go ahead with that. We'll bring that down to zero. And we're obviously saving ourselves some time. Uh, on the overall project. So that's one thing that you might do, have to do is to get rid of the leveling delay by either adding resources or changing the manner in which you're approaching the individual task. The other thing that I want to do is, uh, and, and we're just going to, to have some fun here, is so up here where we do the surround and tiling, we see that that's taking two days for one finisher. And so we want to affect that. So we can get out of leveling delay. We just go to our tracking Gantt. Oh. View, entire project. And so here we are, we're looking at it. It's two days and we'd like to shrink that down uh, to one day. So we choose our task. And if we bring up its resource sheet, we see it has one finisher working for two days or 16 hours. And so if I double my resources available and accept that, now we're going to get this and it says, you know, change the duration, but keep the amount of work the same, which is what we want. So we accept that and it goes down to one day um, with twice the resources. Now this assumes that we're able to acquire those resources, maybe from another project or whatever to help us out in the crunch. And now I, I do notice that uh, sometimes this happens. The Gantt chart itself hasn't updated, even though the duration here has. Uh, I can check to make sure I'm happy with uh, the work that's being done. So the easiest way to do that, go to my task, check my details, Make sure that this is equating 16 hours of work for two, show it should be one day. So I'm happy there. So let's get rid of that. And the easiest way to make Microsoft uh, Project work with that is just to manually change it and change it back. And now everything's fine and everything is working. And we can check to see what that is. We say decrease work, we keep the amount of hours resources the same, so we're good. And again, if you wanna check your details, you can make sure that everything is uh, as you would expect. And of course, so that's working. We've managed to save ourselves a day just by increasing the resources and we can check our costs. I don't have the cost column here. Let me in add the cost column. And so, so we see that that, ta that task, because we haven't increased the work, the task isn't actually costing us more money to do it that way. The reason why we were there is because that's either physically what we felt we could do, or we only had those resources to work on by making the extra resources available 
Uh, it's saving us a day, but it's not costing us any money. Now, the, that assumes that there's a linear relationship between the resources applied and the output that they're able to do. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. You're going to have to make that choice and adjust your resources assigned to the task accordingly or the amount of work that it's going to take, the duration it's going to take with those new resources assigned. So don't just assume it's always going to be linear. You have to make a deliberate choice and make sure you get those uh, values put in there uh, correctly. So the last method that I, I want to show you is fairly straightforward. Basically, when you choose to work overtime. So clearly, we, we put in our resource sheet, we put in overtime rates for all of our employees. And sometimes you just need to find time. And the best way to find that time is to authorize some overtime, whether it's working on a weekend or working longer days. Uh, and by doing that, you're going to be able to shorten your project or make space for another task uh, to come in there. And so just to demonstrate how we do that, so if we choose our paint and finishes, we see it's a two-day task. Let's say we want to get it down to a day and a half, so we're going to have to authorize four hours of overtime so that the actual duration within the scheduling days of the task is only a day and a half. And so the easiest way to do that, again, we're in task. I'm going to bring up our details. I'm going to make sure it's all set on work, and it is. And so what we see here is our finisher is working for two days, uh, you know, eight hours a day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to approve them for him or her for four hours uh, of overtime. And I say OK. And the actual duration as per our work schedule is now down to one and a half days. But keep in mind that there's an extra half day or four hours being worked overtime. So they're going to be on site for, uh, you know, uh, either two hours each day or four hours uh, the one day. And so that's also going to shorten our project by that half day because it was on the critical path. And, and there's lots of things you can do to you know, spend money to buy time and doing it efficiently and effectively in your project is a, is an art in and of itself. Uh, what I hope to have covered uh, in this particular tutorial was managing that space a little bit in Microsoft Project. And so uh, hopefully that's informative. Uh, you got a few tools in your toolbox. You do have to fiddle around a little bit, make sure that it's all working for you. Uh, but uh, it is a, a powerful tool and we can now compare to our baseline, look at our variances and consider the overall health of our project. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the, the tutorial series itself. Uh, I do hope to do a, a series of uh, shorts, if you will, for specific skills or, or tasks that we need to do in Microsoft Project. So if you have an idea of something you'd like to see, you're not sure how to do it and you'd like to know how to do it, uh, put a comment down below and uh, I'll see if I can't get to it and come up with it. We're going to try to keep them down to kind of that two to five minute range just to quickly get in, uh, deal with a, a particular issue and get out. So uh, give me some ideas and we'll see what we can't do. Otherwise, we're going to uh, call this project complete. Uh, we've managed a whole lot of issues and I hope you're better off now in using Microsoft Project uh, for your needs. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the series and we'll talk to you uh, sometime in the future.